Yeah, there, I've turned it on anyway. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure what Al, Al's waving post-its, etc. around, so I'll put funny. pens out. <laughs> Somebody's best me to do something. <laughs> so, um, I think Steve's kind of sharp in just a minute. There he is. So Steve's on here. That's, that's how I'm going to swing it. Julian's brown back. Doesn't take too much running to start a conversation. I have a suggestion, um, which is who turns open spaces? It's a style that we've um, applied in our conferences, which is instead of trying to define an agenda that nobody actually wants to listen to, the folk in the room, <laughs> excuse me, make up the agenda by offering lightning talks. So a lightning talk can be kind of 30 seconds of, I, I had an idea, I tried it, it was shy. Or I had an idea, I tried it, it was quite good, you might get some benefit, and there might be a conversation. Um, so I was going to suggest that, given we're here to um, talk about the way that people manage their time and the way that they reduce the stress from a couple of different stuff that they need to do, that what we ought to do is, is work out um, what techniques we use and then talk about them. So use, use lightning talks um, as a mechanism for coming out with some topics to talk about. So I've got four. Um, guess what? I've got some post-it notes. Okay. <laughs> I'd like you to contribute to it as well. Okay, so techniques that you use to best use of your time to reduce the stress that you're having doing your job to generally be efficient, happy. So if you do a lightning talk on it, which could be any level for the brand. Potentially, I guess like keeping on top of all the the to do's and things, just generally in life. Yeah, so say it's, it could be anything. So I've got some suggestions. I'll tell you what they are so you can see the sorts of ideas. I can talk about a time management technique called Pomodoro. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm happy to talk about it. I used to be a fan of that, Andy. I yeah. still am. That's better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so things you can talk about. You haven't got a pen with you. You've got a pen. I knew you'd have one. Okay. <laughs> so um, email behaviour. I'll talk about. I've, I've, I've got one for that as well, actually. Yeah. So inbox zero um, behaviour. CC two. Okay. Oh, my, mine's more about the um, return to work inbox. I know, I just put the phone Return thing. to work, right. Those sneak previews. Yeah, good idea. I'll just stop and say about that. Um, the ideas about the difference between important, urgent, <coughs> and influence. I can talk about that. Okay. I'm interested in finding out what people do to visualise what's going on, but I haven't got a lot to say about it. Um, right, someone else can take over, I've said enough. So who's got something to say about the way they, they manage their time, the way they stay focused, the way that they work effectively, what is it that you do, what are the tools, the technique, the techniques that you use? I could do something for a few minutes on the idea of context. Context and switching? <laughs> no, as in context is in the context in which you can do a task. Okay. Who else? I can talk I mean, with speed about how I make my own little Kanban. Yeah. With personal <laughs> Kanban. Personal Kanban. I don't know if I'm doing it officially, but... <laughs> Steve can also talk at speed about how he can do more by talking at speed. I was going to say that. <laughs> that's my <laughs> service <laughs> purposes as well. Faster. Despite the fact you have to then slow it down three different times. Slower, no slower, no slower again. That's if the person hasn't been scared off first. Sorry. TFDL. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> Didn't listen. <laughs> if anybody's got something to, that they've found as a way to help them stick to various good techniques, I'd love to hear about that. Because <laughs> I haven't question. found it yet. Well, someone's you're, nailed that. You haven't found the technique that's helped you. I found things which I've loved and then stopped doing for inexplicable reasons. So they haven't been effective, have they? Or I haven't been effective. Yeah. I don't know if I can blame the techniques. Right. Can I talk about, very briefly, about scratch pads, I guess? Yeah. We've got about ten things up here, I think. We've got seven or eight. We could see how we get going with those and then see what time's left and they might spark up some more ideas for other people. Anyone got anything else? I use something, but I don't 
Uh, there we go. Right, so Joe's 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 How we prioritise would be an interesting one as well, wouldn't it? And I think it's now what else? What else do we think it might be interesting? Uh, I think I'd need more prep to do justice to something like uh, GTD. That's, that's kind, kind of, of going to touch big... the context as one piece of that. Kind of yeah, thing. that's getting things done. It's quite well, a did. big well, one. That's, Damn it. Well, that's a lightning talk, isn't it? That is, yeah. that might see yeah. that we're going to do a brown bag on it. Mm -hmm. Right? I'd like to, I'd love to hear something about me. I'd love to hear what it's like to wander into an organisation like this, <clears throat> right, with all this stuff going on that, you know, you may, maybe don't understand what it is, and how, how you stay focused, uh, what you think about the, the ways that we try and organise, how we see the man. But no pressure, don't want to do it, you don't have to. I, I, I'm trying to think of best way to put it in words, actually. Right, so have a think about you know, it. Yeah, the end, they're not too busy with the so the idea, Chris, was to use um, lightning talks and open spaces, which is two separate types you use quite well, which is where you don't necessarily have something to talk about, but you want to find out what the opinion in the room is. So um, we've got about 10 up there. Uh, that's Pomodoro. Importancy, agency and influence, email behaviour, visualisation, context, um, personal handman, communicate effectively, scratch pads, Joe's unnamed prioritisation stuff, not shit stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, Danny's talk that you might or might not do, which is around what it's like, it's like walking into an organisation that's fairly large, owned by a big corporate and does mental things that are really hard to understand. <laughs> And getting things done. Anything else? Who's the most organised person in this room? Point of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. You haven't said anything yet. I've got something to oh, say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So return to work emails. I'll keep oh, yeah. that if you want. Yeah. yeah. Start from that. that. Um, we're going to be the inverse of that, by the way. So I guess we all know the feeling of going on holiday for a week, two weeks, in my case sometimes three weeks, and you arrive back at work on the Monday morning and open up your inbox and you've suddenly got 200, 600, 800 emails. I think 803 was the maximum I had after one trip. Um, and back in the days before I kind of came to the conclusion that I needed to do something a bit smarter about getting through them all, it probably took me until the Wednesday of the first week back before I got back to some semblance of order, you know, read that, file it away, read that, reply, delete that, and so on. Um, so what I started doing was the first day I come back into the office after an extended break, I just create a folder um, called Holiday Emails, and everything that has been sent to me during the time of my holiday, I just move over. So all I'm dealing with is the emails that have come in from the Saturday, Sunday and the Monday morning, as you would do any normal Monday. But what that means is that you can get back up to speed pretty quickly because you're just dealing with the here and now. But if anyone does come to you and say, oh, I sent you an email about such and such while you were away, you can go and find it in the folder. You can go and look at the details. You can respond to it. But I found that 90%, 95% of the emails that you've got to troll through have either already been dealt with, there were FYIs, there were service now comms that the issue has been resolved anyway, and you were just wasting time trying to get back up to speed. And I've done that for the past three years now, and not one time has anyone come over and gone, you've not replied to this email, or why hasn't this been dealt with? It just takes all of the clutter away from day one. You can get back up to speed on the stuff that's happening on the ground, and you've got the emails there to refer to if you need them. Who else suffers when we come back from holiday? Oh, you know, right, most people know. <coughs> yeah, I can do. Uh, I, I worked, um, my boss at Valtech, maybe in fact my predecessor, he left us on a role, but he, um, he used to 
deletes emails when he came back in. And he, his view was that if it's important enough to surface, it'll surface again. Yeah, I've never had a thought to do it. But that's more or less what you're proposing. It's kind of a, it's a halfway house between having to go through them all one by one and deleting them and hoping that if it's important, it'll come back to you. Um, so, you know, within half an hour of getting into the office on the first day back, I'm essentially just dealing with the stuff that's come in from the weekend and that Monday morning. Yeah. I've yeah. heard that referred to more generally as uh, declaring email, email bankruptcy, bankruptcy yes. where you essentially say, what is done is done, and writing off all that kind of debt yeah. of email, as it were, and saying, right, we're starting a fresh kind of thing. Yeah. And sometimes people will send out an email simply saying, right, if you sent me something, I didn't see it. So, so something yeah, in the last three weeks, I have people. to lease it all. Yeah. There's an interesting um, undercurrent to this, isn't there, which is people use email as a task management system. What I do is when I get an email in, I, if it's worthy of doing something with, I write it on my to-do list. I was going to talk about visualisation, this is what I carry around. Um, and I do something about it, or I prioritise it down sufficiently that I don't do anything about it. So it falls to the bottom, nobody's complaining, I'll make a decision, I'm not going to do anything. I'll scrub it, don't deal with it. But I don't allow things to lurk in my inbox. Yeah, I use email communication and not task management. I know there are tools for, for using email exactly as task management. I've never tried them. I don't know. Yeah. Google have recently tried, and they've got a new product called Inbox, where they've tried to make it like a bit more. It's they've treated emails as things that are to be done, um, especially just a different skin on the same thing. So it's essentially just archives of the market's done. But I found it put me in a kind of weird halfway house. I like using it, but what I treat as done is I've processed it and filed. I've decided, generally speaking, it ends up being as a to-do on my to-do list. So otherwise, it ends up being confusing. Whether I, so I don't leave it in email. It's done from email when it's on the to-do list, or it's decided it's not. That's I've got I um, a halfway house. Well, I've got something that builds on this. Uh, if you ever use uh, Evernote. There's yeah. the Evernote email clipper tool, so what people have done with that is uh, when you get an email, you determine is it a task, is it just a quick reply to, reply to the ones which are easily dealt with. If it is a task, clip it into Evernote, straight into a actions folder in Evernote, and get it out of your email box, delete it, so all what's coming into email is either information or new stuff. As opposed to what generally happens then is, uh, well, I'm keeping that email there because I haven't finished working through what's needed, and the email box just goes bigger and bigger and bigger. And it becomes harder to find what are the tasks you're trying to do in it, and what's just people letting you know stuff, and all sorts. What's people's opinion about um, the, helpfulness, excuse me, the helpfulness of task management tools? Uh, so Evernote. Evernote, I, uh, I swear by Evernote yeah. and Trello, yeah. I've used a, um, I remember what it's called, um, I think it's called Tech App, Tech App, I can't quite remember. Um, and it's not quite Kanban, but it's basically, <coughs> basically sort of um, in priority, a high, low, what have you, and it's basically a checklist right. as and when you do it. Um, yeah, there are other ones like Remember the Milk is another one. Yeah. I, I personally found, we spoke about this briefly before, that post-it notes and my notebook are my task management because yeah. there's something about actually I, uh, writing it down that makes it stick I, in my right. head more. Typing it in doesn't work for me. I can type things in, save them to a document. It doesn't trigger the same bells yeah. as having okay. actually physically written it down and someone can come back months later and say, oh, you know, do we remember having a conversation about this? And if I've written myself a note about it, it does come to mind a lot easier than just having... Yeah. That's 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 See, I, actually, yeah, I make that. notes in my note. I generally keep an open. I make notes in, in, uh, in meeting things, but if I put to-dos in there, I always lose them because it's just too time-based. They just disappear into history. So it's kind of okay for when I want to flip back and find something, you know, it's easier to find it because there's just kind of visual click cues and doodles and things. It helps me kind of find, recognize the page and things. But in terms of a to-do list, I find it, it just gets lost for me in there. The two things I do to solve that problem. <laughs> I take, I have a, a thing I call my daily log and it's a Word document. Uh, and I'll take notes like that and I'll photograph it and I'll insert it in there and I'll put a little bit of metadata around it. So I'll say time management brown bag. And then in the future I need to search for it, I'll search for it. And it's really low um, effort. But I keep a separate list, and it's this. Well, you see me kind of clutching this because that's everything that's going on. 
Um, but it is just a reminder of what it is. Doesn't have any details about what it is. I usually go to an email for detail or a document or something else. But I, I separate it into things that are urgent, things that are important. Uh, I separate it into things that I am doing and things that I'm asking others to do. Yeah, and that helps me to focus on what is the activity I need to do right now. Um, I also separate work from me and um, where where the stuff I do requires me to interact with other people and I've got forums to do it. So like the Uber stand up, uh, the recruitment stand up, the head to catch up, the leadership team meeting in the town hall. I put them on there, but there's only one thing on here for all the things I'm doing. So do you reprint that every day? Every or? week. Every yeah, week. do you still post it up? Um, so you know you're you right posting it as you take pictures. Right. And we've actually done an app where you rec can manage the card recognizers. No, I'll try so that. I use Evernote in a similar way for capturing those little sort of notes, which I suppose I could use with my, with my notebook more, but I use that as a place where I might want to search it and find it again, especially with the pictures and the OCRs and the text. And things. Uh, what I was going to say, uh, you said that, yeah, you take notes and stuff and you find that you lose to-dos in it. Yeah. Uh, that leads on a bit to uh, what I wanted to say about scratch pads. Because um, I found what works well for me is having... A scratch pad, which is the cheapest, nastiest notebook you can get, so you don't get any attachment to it. And uh, I find that if so, if I so yeah, everything just goes down in there, any notes, any doodles, any whatevers. Um, but if it starts building up to, there's a couple of pages with stuff written on it, so I'll we'll go back and look at the first one. And if there's still stuff on it which is relevant, uh, then that means that if it's been there for a couple of days or it's starting to build up that and that's still relevant then it's important enough to actually be making a note of it elsewhere which is why I start putting so it into webinars. Off the other ones. As soon as it's all like if there's nothing relevant on this page it's been here for two days tear it out throw it away so all there is there is what's current. If anything survives process or it's all go well I don't want to bin that information oh well in that case it's important enough to store it away somewhere more permanent. <coughs> So it's self selection again, isn't it? By allowing it to drop down your priority list, do nothing, not have any impact on doing it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, what you're striving to bin stuff off, aren't you? Yeah. Well, that's the same to do with this, I think, that there are things that have been on it for months, and pretty soon they'll get chopped out. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like what quite a few of you are talking about, and you also have different formal ways of doing it, is just having hierarchies. So whether it's for priority or for uh, subtasks for a particular task. So, uh, yeah, I, I've personally got a hierarchy. If the stuff I'm working on right now, I'll keep either uh, written down or using just a like, really simple checklist app. I'll, I'll be using that. But if it's something incredibly important that I know I can't forget, that's a post it on my screen. So there's kind of different levels of vis visibility. And, and like Andy says, if, uh, if something if something's important enough for me to keep visiting it and it doesn't get done, that kind of gets bumped up the hierarchy to it. So scroll on the screen of the yeah. market. And I've, I've seen it done um, yeah, almost like brain dump. Of, uh, you, know, you start with what are my most high, high priority tasks and you sort of off from there and they might have some tasks involved in them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I know for some people that's, that's quite effective but I've not found a useful bit of software for doing that yet. So I, I find that having more than one source of stuff to do makes me stressed. Mm -hmm. Right, because I've got but even within your one piece of paper, you've got you categorisation. Yeah. Yeah. I got um, validly challenged by one of my colleagues at Valtech um, from suffering from a condition he called premature categorisation. Right, whenever I see a problem, I think it's because of an engineering background, software engineering background. I can't help myself to try and categorise those things together because I find it easier to think about four groups of activities I've got to do than 40 things I have to do. And that's why I find that helpful. So the urgent stuff, I know what I'm going to do and stop, just stop doing it and get on with it. And the important stuff, like I will do it, but I won't do it now. So effectively, and because I prioritise it, I'm saying I only actually have to do that to be successful. Yeah. And in, at the start of the week, I write a post-it note with the things I aspire to do from it. And I'm probably about 7% hit rate right on that. So it changes during the week, but it gives me, it, for me, it reduces stress because it, it appears to link with that going on, which yeah. I think is what you're achieving. Isn't it? Something that I've found, which I, I think I might have got from um, somewhere near the beginning of GTD since I've never finished it, getting to um, 
is like what I tend to do is I'll put if there's a sort of project something that needs got a couple of steps to it, I generally only put the first one in my to do list because the other ones are implicitly pretty much blocked. Um, if either because you can't do it until you've done the first step, or because you know only one of those things is probably the most important thing to do. So if you've got limited time, then if you've got to do something to move that thing forward, there's only kind of you know you may as well pick now which thing it is you're going to do. Um, so that way I kind of try and thin out things in my to do list app are just kind of individual single actions I can do for kind of various things. I don't try and think out all the steps that will be involved further down the line, which I guess is similar to the way we, we try and work our software teams, that we're not trying to plan sort of 20 years of development. We're kind of trying to keep a fairly short train of stuff. Just do one task at a time. Yeah. yeah. So I try and be rigorous about writing it on here and not thinking about it. Otherwise, I start thinking about it. Five minutes later, I've opened an yep. email and I've started doing it. Rather than the thing I was trying to achieve, which was find out when I'm going to do it. Yeah. I think it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the first step in GTD. It's called the brain dump, which is uh, so any time you think of something you need to do, you immediately actually make a note of it. You don't keep it in your mind because people forget very easily. And whilst you've actually got it in your mind, you will be mulling it over here and there. I do that a lot. Yeah, it's better to actually just get it down, them. notebook, whatever. Yeah. Just get them down. From so, it, so what do you do with your? So you've got your columns of urgent, important, so urgent do. Urgent delegate, important do, important delegate, right. and then get my missing car key replaced so I don't get lots of other car stuff for me. Um, and that's pretty much it. So so then you were saying about letting things drop to the bottom. How do you how do you prioritise? So it, obviously it's from other people telling you this is yeah. important and stuff like that. So every week I decide what I think is important and I colour it red. Yeah. And that's your text so I print it off. Uh, and then it changes during the week so that Purple mark from this, or where it's changed, and I try and put it into the right place. So that's highest priority, that's lowest. So try and put it in the right place. Um, I don't know whether it's effective or not, but I, do, I fairly firmly believe that if you're not doing the right thing, you'll find out about it pretty quickly because it has an impact somewhere <coughs> and gets on your radar. So you, you've made this distinction a couple of times between um, urgent and important. How do you choose the kind of personally? How do you choose the mix between those two jobs? Those kind of cat flavors of um, work, so that the important but not urgent doesn't sort of get starved and things like that. It does, because there's always something that's urgent. It's being brutal about saying. Um, it's always going to be a judgment call, isn't it? Which is never going to be perfect, but it's based on your experience and what's going on <coughs> that day and that week, I guess. Yeah, so there's an example here. Um, I, I need to remind Stu to message something in town hall about if you want to push your holidays beyond the end of the year, do it. It hasn't happened, it hasn't happened for a week, which is kind of verging on quite embarrassing, given how simple that is. But compared with some of the stuff I've been on to, I've made a conscious decision I'm not going to do that in favour of doing something else. Sometimes you need to justify it, like, because you let someone down by doing that. But it's, I always think you've made a sensible judgment call about sod that because of that. Yeah, that's something that. Oh, sorry. Go. I look at the impacts of not doing something. What's the impact of not doing that? And that usually helps me find time to do it. I found that uh, we're maybe going to get onto Pomodoro a bit later, but I found that if you've got your full day planned out with that, of things you need to do and how long you estimate they're going to do, it's very good for getting control of your workflow again if you find yourself going into that bit where people come over and go, oh, could you do this? And, oh, could you do that? And your first tendency is to go, uh, yeah, I will, I'll do it. And, and you then sort of find yourself really struggling to get through the day. But uh, if you're able to have already planned through some things you need to do, things you know you need to do and you've kind of estimated times, etc., someone comes over and says, can you do this? And you can quite honestly look at it and go, actually, no, I can't do it yeah. today. And it takes so much of the stress out of your life because otherwise you find yourself having promised people you're going to do things and you've, you've bitten off more than you can chew. This is why software projects run late often mm. because the business thinks they're asking for predictability but they're actually demanding flexibility. Yeah. Because they're going, oh, just do that. How big is that? It can only be 10 minutes. Come on. But we all know that by the time you've thought about it, you've stopped what you were doing, you've written a test, you've written software, you've deployed it, it's gone wrong in production, you've rolled it back, you it a day. One of the dangers is treating other people's time as more precious than your own as well. So if I if I need 
you know, if I know I need to do something or some paperwork to do or I just need some time to think about something, I'll I'll send myself a meeting invite so that it's in my diary yeah, and it's and the time's that, yeah. unavailable because if you just try and do it sat at your desk or whatever and there's nothing in your diary, you can guarantee that someone will send you a meeting invite and then you almost feel yeah. obliged to go and that's then treating their time as more important than, than your own. Yeah. I think there's, yeah, there's, there's a, time, an yeah. underlying problem with a lot of this. There's a hell of a lot going on. Yeah. And also things like what you just said, people just invite, we will invite you to a meeting. People are very quick to send emails, to send e meeting requests. Do you really need to be at that, at that right. meeting? Yeah. Right. So I suppose there's a lot of stuff people need to, as well as prioritising, is also just, I think you touched on it a minute ago, just get rid of it. Just don't go to the meeting. Well, that's, that's the in inevitable problem with emails, isn't it? That people do tend to use it as a fire and forget. Well, I've sent an email to someone now. I've got it out of my inbox. It's someone else's problem. Yeah. I'll wait for them to come yeah. back to me when it, they Jesus, have a reply. Or an audit trail. It's yeah. Used for so yeah. many, so many things. I mean, I, I do it. I send. I have a conversation and I immediately send them an email. Just because I know what will happen is two weeks later, no one remembers that conversation. So. Which then just pollutes your time and yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Um, we can come to what's about that. Um, meeting behaviours, right? When you roll into a meeting, I do it quite a lot. It sounds really quite rude, but when I start something, even if it's not my meeting, I'll say I'm here because uh, I have a I have a stake holding in the um, Devon test environment thing, and I'm keen that it goes right. Why are you here? Right, go round everyone and see who goes. And the, the intent is to get rid of as many people in that room as you possibly can. Because th this at the moment is costing late rooms what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A day and a half. No, it's not. Yeah. We're on lunch break. Well, lunch, yeah. Yeah, but you, you can have <laughs> these yeah. sorts of meetings which yeah. can seem quite yeah. innocuous. Some of them can, not this sort, it's highly valuable, but 12. We saw what emerged last week, this week, didn't we? Yeah, there was we managed to... 18 people on the distribution? Yeah, we managed to roll back on that one. But yeah, you had another cast of thousands. Stand-ups we've had during previous crises as well, that sort of thing. Oh, God. So, so that, I guess what I'm encouraging you to do there is to challenge your attendance. Attend and extract yourself, or challenge and challenge other people's attendance there and try and keep the meetings as quick as you can and as small an audience as you can. And my first, uh, first company I worked at, the, uh, the head of development was also the MD and the founder of the company. And he obviously had a vested interest in things. And he would sit down and he'd always start me to go, this is costing us, and he'd price it per minute roughly in his head. And he'd be like, you know, this is costing X hundred pounds a minute, go. And it really put a thing on, like just a bit of focus that, you know, because obviously he knew roughly what people were kind of being paid. And he'd just do a rough yeah. top, back of the envelope kind of figure. And just, you'd always start the meeting with how much this is costing the company. Uh, this this number there's of a people valid record about so you can work out why everyone was off. Yeah. I think some people just that they have to, I know I used to, every time I have a meeting with friends, I think, oh, I must, I must obviously need to be there, hence I'm getting invited. So I, I kind of think that I have to go. Yeah. But I've, I've sort of certainly learned that actually, I don't necessarily need to be there. No, uh, people just maybe think that I need to, but, so I think it's just kind of, Realising that actually you can say no to a meeting, you don't have to. Absolutely. I've and been, you, don't, you don't have to do it at the point of conversation, you can do it when the meeting starts, because often you won't understand the objective. Yeah. Until you get in I've been in a meeting now, halfway through, I've actually never been to be It's great to do that, that's absolutely perfect. I, I do as well, I think if I'm not going to be of any value at all, I'll just review myself. Your yeah. timing is shocking. I know, I'm going in. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've got three minutes, I know where I'm going, it's on the road. <laughs> I think it's important to note there's counter examples to these though. So, uh, you know, sometimes, a lot of the time you have got too many people in a meeting. Sometimes if you've got yeah. too few people in the meeting, yeah. things get missed. The cost for that down the road yeah. is much higher. And similarly, if, if you try and accelerate the meeting by making it obvious that it is costing money, you don't want to start. Yeah, yeah. Drinks get missed. Pla planning yeah. is one that I get yeah. quite stroppy about when you see three people in a planning meeting and you've got a delivery team. Everyone in the team needs to be in that room. Otherwise, something doesn't pop out, and that's dark matter. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is that uh, <coughs> there are many different flavors of meeting, and there are many different, uh, yes. There are meetings where it's essential people are there, it's meetings which are nice to have. Only thing is, we've only got the one word, and that's meeting. And it tries right. to encapsulate everything, so we can't communicate to anyone 
Is this one of those meetings which desperately needs everyone? Is this one of those meetings where, well, if you've got the free time, it's cool, or you'll be able to duck out halfway through? We don't have any way of really differentiating that just by having a meeting. I've noticed a massive change since losing 4 9. When you've got less meeting room, yes. we have less meeting. People now will just have a discussion around the desk and then move on. Yeah. We don't have to book out 30 minutes or 60 minute slots anymore. Mm -hmm. you know, we can't book out 30 minutes and 60 minute slots. So, you yeah, you just have a chat around the table or around your desk or just in the aisle and things get done straight away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's another good one, isn't it? Is that think clearly about whether you actually need a meeting mm -hmm. or you just need a bit of collaboration. Yeah. And if you just need a bit of collaboration, go and ask someone. And if they say actually, no, respect that, do it later. So what prompted that? That was um, having less meeting rooms. Or yeah, not yeah. In them. If you don't give people space to have, although them. there was a useful space on floor nine for more informal things, where people would just jump into the middle of it. Mm -hmm. There was a kind of breakout space. Oh, the breakout yeah. space, yeah, Which that was very nice. But yeah, even that though, yeah, even that on floor nine, you wouldn't have a, you'd never book a meeting, yeah, in the social space. That would just be, yeah, we just about that in the breakout space. That, you know, yeah. <laughs> You would just it yeah. more organic. organic. But I think that there's less there's less stigma as well for leaving. If you're in a thing with the door closed at a meeting and you're say sat there, if you wanted to leave, you've got to go. Whereas if it's just a conversation and people sort of stood around, people gradually sort of phase out the conversation and just walk off and leave. And so the cost of leaving is much higher when you're in a room with a shut door. But we should break that expectation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone isn't getting value out of this, I'd really hope they just walk out. Yeah. yeah. Just so on anything that's been invited to. Well, that's the one for an open spaces conference, isn't it? So when you first turn up and they're telling you what the rules are, they have to sort of break that conditioning and they actually say, if you're in a talk and you're not getting anything from it, get up and move to another one. But people have to be told that, otherwise they'll quite happily sit there and go, oh, I don't like this one, but it's probably good as I've got to be here, I'm here if now. Organize the meeting. It's probably it's a good thing to do to just to kind of say, by the way, leave any time, yeah. because that just... As the person who put the thing in the calendar, it's often you've probably got most power to help people leave. You can see it around in a meeting because you, you you look around the table and like there'll be four or five people just on their laptops. Yeah, we don't staring off they're obviously not paying attention to the meeting. Not necessarily. For example, like I always do in meetings, and it's I always do it, and it helps me pay attention. Not a laptop. Yeah, I, no, I, not I, a pad. I'm assuming. Yeah, but I'm guilty of that. Yeah. And also, he's been to a meeting. 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 <laughs> yeah, oh, you, you, you sit in a meeting, everyone sat on the laptop doing work. Yeah, like, no, well, that's true. Are you actually listening? Should we be sat here? Is there any point? Yeah. The answer to that is to do that meeting at the desks and then they can continue to work and if something causes a to bring up, then yeah, yeah. give yeah. your opinion. That's, um, I was going to say something about um, our email behaviours. I, I will um, read the subject line and the first few lines of, a, of an email that I'm CC'd on. I will assume there's nothing in there for me to act on. Yeah. 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 And I, so I know it's a lot of people's to and CC behavior is just erratic. You find yourself with a match at the bottom. So if you CC me on something and expect to do something and I don't, that would be why. Right. That's how you uh, send a message to Al that you don't really want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got some bad news. Good I'll just CC yeah, Al and stick it down around. about four <laughs> lines. <laughs> yeah. Might be yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 We yeah, definitely, definitely, CC <laughs> There's a tile list that because of my OCD. I will read it at some point. It might be a month and a half later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, with emails, I'm very much just a very quick skimmer. Skim. And it, everything sits in my inbox. If you look at my inbox, it's got loads of red email in it. Mm -hmm. I know everyone's different. Some people like to have an empty one. I can see some reeling <laughs> on the idea of it. Mine. But I just, yeah, I just, I don't mine. bother filing. Because that's what the search box was for. If, if I want to, yeah, see that. That's that's beautiful. See, for someone who's as OCD as me, he has no idea what he has to do for the next <laughs> month, but he's got a beautiful inbox. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my post-it lock. Not on my desk lined up at a perfect 45 degree angle. Oh, you so know we're all going to mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have been constantly. Alan Barrett have been me constantly <laughs> for it. But yeah, I just, just find that. just quickly skimming. Just, I don't know if it's just me saying about techniques and just. I think I just work on stuff immediately if I need to. Well, I think you've touched or, on or something Or I do there. put a flag on it if I have to come back to it, and then never come back to it. You have touched on something there, though. Look, there's, there's a whole lot of different techniques, but what everyone's an individual, and if yeah. what works for me would be 
completely, you know, anathema for you, and likewise, you know, vice versa. So, mm. so the point of this is to, if kind of something a, resonates with yeah. you, mm -hmm. try it and go to try. and ask the person who's talking about it how they do yeah. it. Because the way I try to do it with my email, and unfortunately my inbox is a little backed up at the moment because it slips, but uh, I say I get the emails. If it's something I actually need to do something with, uh, it gets clipped off to Evernote, and then the email gets shoved off into a 2014 folder. Um, or if it's not even anything important, it's just, or reply, bloom, and delete. It's like there's no information I need to retain here. Deletes. If there's information I might need to retain at some point, you know, 2014. Yeah. Uh, if there's something I need to do, clip it into Evernote. There we go. There's my action. It's big to do list. I, I, I do. That's that kind of GTD sort of idea, isn't it? Yeah. You triage things quickly. It's either something you can do in under two minutes. Do it now. Yeah. Something you need to do at some point. <coughs> stick it on a to-do list. Yeah. Something's for reference. You file it, or you just delete it if yep. it's none of the above. It's kind yep. of a. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a habit of keeping. I I kind of. I have, I'm not as bad as that, <laughs> but I do or have various, that. or as good as that, yeah. <laughs> so like if it's different projects, I have project type folders, and I do tend to keep a lot of emails that relate to that project, so I can kind of refer back to it, mm -hmm. but it every is. kind of, say, every other month, I then try and kind of go through delete. I used to do that, right, I've stopped doing that, I've started doing what he does, something slightly different actually. I move out of the inbox, because when it's gone out of the inbox, I know I won't forget. Yeah. It just goes into part of the process. Mm -hmm. I don't categorise it, I don't do anything with it because there's a load of software tool to help me categorise. The thing I always remember is who sent it to me. Yeah, and with a combination of who sent it and a word that might appear in there, I always find it. So I don't spend any effort going, oh, that's beyond and that's, you know, that's uh, distribution. It depends on how your brain works. I mean, that's not to say someone's brain's better than the other, but if you, some people can remember, you know, things in alphabetical order and some will use colour order and stuff like that, you know, um, I'm happy to just have everything jumbled up and I kind of think I know where everything is in that jumbled order. But, but I tried the inbox zero, I think it was an app meant to help you with it and it stressed me out trying to keep it at zero more than it did just yeah. using it to get to what is now 700 emails. But I, don't, I, I, I got too caught up trying to keep it at zero that it was just consuming too much yeah, time. So gamification of email. Yeah, I just thought yeah. screw it, I can't bother with this anymore and I was a lot more relaxed and I didn't notice any impact. So you yeah. just stop worrying about the size of your number of unread emails in your inbox or number of red emails. But also maybe you have a look at your unread emails and have a, actually spend you know, quarter an hour looking at them. Are they are you on distribution list you just don't need to be on? Mm -hmm. Just get yourself up. Gareth Law has been filing away for as long as we've had New Relic. The New Relic alerts. I do the exact he's same. He's just been filing them away and hoping someone else cares. He's the only one on that distribution yeah. list. Yeah. Right. He should have noticed. Oh, and then we. Uh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Whole different thing. I but, have a folder in Outlook called Noise. And I have a bunch of email rules written which pick up things like yeah, the service, service announcements. Service announcements. Uh, and uh, my New Relic. Um, Morning performance report thingies, etc., etc. And it all just automatically gets put into noise, so it's not there in my own books. And it's like maybe once a day or once a week, I'll sort of have a drip through the noise folder and see is there anything interesting? Because it's usually not. See, that's interesting. There's somebody else in this office. It's their job to send out service now emails. Yeah. So I know. Somebody is sitting in this office, spending five ten minutes per email. Writing them. And well, these are a lot more submissive ones, mostly. It's the distribution list that's the problem, isn't it? Someone yeah. wants it, someone's asked for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wonder whether they are. Or I, 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 yeah, I mean, I some people it. probably do. But at my old work, there was a girl who was sending out a weekly report. She told me a story. She was sending his weekly report out. And then one, one day, that boss wasn't in. So someone said, oh, I'll send it to that guy. He goes, what's this report? Why are you sending it to me? Oh, well, we send this out every week. Well, I've never seen it. And then as people started leaving, they were, she was just getting more and more, this person doesn't work here anymore. And realised eventually she'd been sending this email every week to nobody. Nobody cared about this email, but it was one of these, well, we just send that report. I wonder if it can even go the wrong way, though, because I got dropped off the um, severity incident list. And then uh, being on apps for had no visibility of what was happening to everyone else. The control I mean, oh, it week. Just, Why didn't just the person publishing the report is deciding the recipients rather than people being. It should subscription. Exactly. subscriptions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you should so, you, so you're left thinking, who's this relevant to? You're going to miss someone it is important to and send it to 20 people at least. Yes. Who, who you um, 
who will use what you produce is a filter you can apply, isn't it? And I use this with documentation all the time. And someone says I'm going to write a document for, I say who's going to use it and what are they going to use it for? You can, you can apply it to anything, like email. Who's going to use that? And if the answer is someone's going to use it to do something, great, do it. If you can't find them, then stop doing it. Could we perhaps turn this around and, yes, move it to a pub sub? I mean, RSS feeds are a nice mature technology. Use less. Use less. So that's mighty interesting, isn't it? Could we recommend for certain things that we communicate as an organisation, like um, service status, like you work for the goers, feeds? Providing mm -hmm. that it's visible where they are, so we're yes. people having a page essentially advertising them. Yes. So you kind of want one place, and maybe it's categorised, so you go to the page, some kind of information hub, as it were, mm -hmm. and you've got kind of like service announcements, and then under there you've maybe got various things, and you can subscribe easily from there, because yeah, obviously yes. if nobody knows it's there, then you can't do it. That's 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 the, the emails that go out about it can just be a one-off announcement of <coughs> so ironically, a feed. One of the so the examples, you can actually do that already, New Relic, you do subscribe yeah. to these things, you can also unsubscribe. Yeah. And Zendesk, which we're moving to, has our service. Ooh, yeah, so it might be worth just, uh, probably as you said, a lot of these things do have RSS, but some of the things which are more manually produced perhaps don't and could have, and then it's a matter of centralising the information about where they are. Yeah. Also, I mean, you've got a lot of techies in this, on this floor in particular. Some people may want, they may want to set up some kind of keyword trigger. I guarantee if you supply information as RSS, people who care about it we'll and are of a technical capacity will script it so that they know when something relevant happens on there, whereas an email, they're probably not going to manage that one well. Right. So, um, I want to hear all about Joe's un unnamed. Uh, yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a shocking piece of time management, wasn't it? Um, oh, one thing I have to say, you know, important and urgent. Um, this is actually Gareth Walsh for this, but he does the whole um, when you're trying to prioritise stuff, think about um, whether it's important and think about whether you have influence. <coughs> yeah, and act on the things that are. Uh, in the intersection between the two, they don't try and stick anything that you can't influence. Find some of the cannons, get them to do it rather than do um, What should we talk about now? That just reminds me just remind you of something with, um, so again, something that Dave Allen, the Getting Things Done, though, said, which is remarkably simple, but again, it, it seems like it uh, makes quite a difference the way you think about it. And again, it taps into the way we do things with coming up with a software card. He said the amount of people who'd work with, like a consultant, and you look at their to-do list, and none of them were doable things. They were just amorphous yeah. things that nobody had actually, a lot of people hadn't broken it down to something you can do, so it never gets ticked off because it's not actually doable. And so it's hassling your brain that this thing isn't happening. So you're saying, you know, boil it down to a doable, which is a bit like what we have with, you know, definition of done, you don't have amorphous tickets, which, you know, what does it mean for this thing to actually be complete? Yeah. If you don't know what it actually means for that thing to be done, you're never going to do it. Mm. Do you folks feel stress when you don't know what it is you to do? And is that worse than knowing you have a lot to do, but being pretty clear about what it is? Yes. Mm -hmm. As I do. Yes. Yeah. Re recently, I, I used to kind of be a fairly, yeah. I went through a period of being fairly organised, then it all went a bit, part of the reason this came up in my head is because I've recently sort of set about trying to get it all sorted. It got to a bit of a crisis point, not so much the things doing at work, it's being just kind of a grunt in the bottom, it's generally more straightforward what I'm doing, but just to do with like the amount of things I was trying to pay for work, things trying to sort out at home, and, and I just felt completely lost and a pile of posts I hadn't opened, I didn't know what was going on, it was so stressful. And once I just kind of blitzed through it, at least got it on a list, I had confidence and I was comfortable about what I wasn't doing. Yeah. Because I was yeah. confident I was doing the thing that I could do best and that made such a difference just to how I felt. It was just an enormous difference. I thought, what the hell have I been doing for the last couple of years where I slipped out of these kind of habits? Well, that's how I ended up. Uh, yes, I don't use uh, GCD all the time, but uh, I do fall back on it whenever everything in life feels like it's flying apart and I can't keep on top of it. That's when I feel the need to actually get some sort of rigid process in like that, and yes, it helps amazingly. Okay, what do you want to talk about next? We've kind of talked a little bit about GCD, haven't we? Yeah, it's come up a few times. I think there's enough in there for a, a full-scale brown bag. Scratch pads. Oh, so scratch pads. pads. Yeah, Already yeah. talked about scratch pads. Um, personal Kanban, Context, Danny's Talk, Pomodoro, Joe's Prioritization stuff. <laughs> Abandoned. There we go. Waste. <laughs> uh, context? 
Okay, so again, this is this is an idea which is well, kind of is everyone cool with yeah, going around right. it more? Yeah. It's yeah. just a quick one, but again, it's another thing which at least I picked up from Dave and I'm sure most of these ideas go in circles. Which is basically just another one of these things about not stressing about things you can't do or aren't doing. And he basically says, you know, if you mark the to dos that you know things you figure out something he's doing, there's probably only a context in which it can be done. If you kind of tag it as such, either in some paper system or like I use something which is synced on my phone then you can, it's easy to filter it so that it's easy to see what you can be doing something about. So for example, I put a to-do on just this morning where I need to I need to call someone, and that's on the context of daytime. Because I don't need to see that this evening when I'm looking at my well, new job, because they've already gone right. home. And likewise, I've probably got something on here to do with, you know, something in the garden. That's not much use to me at lunchtime. So I can then just filter. I can actually say, show me things I can do in Manchester, like at lunchtime. What could I be doing now, sat at a computer? And the list is now a lot shorter. It's so much easier then to prioritise. Um, I think he suggests that you might want to kind of, if you're trying to pick what to do in any given moment, first context, because if you can't do it, you can't do it. Like second time, you can't do like a two hour job in 15 minutes. And then I think yeah. it gets a bit more and more, it's like how much sort of energy have you got, you know, something more creative you want. That's really, that's back. really cool idea. What, what app do you use for it? Uh, I use... Um, well, you know, we'll chat about it doesn't it. matter. Evernote with tags. Loads of them do it. No, it is tags because I'll, I'll yeah. take a photograph of these notes. Um, I use to-do.text. Mm -hmm. Which is... I think what you just hit on something that I'm really like, bad for is I'll be at home and I exactly that thing of I need to ring somebody. Right, I'll do it tomorrow lunch. Get to work, yeah. then all of work is happening, then I sit down and do a crossword for lunch, come back to the desk and work's happening again. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I forgot to ring the guy about the yeah. thing and I'll do that So tomorrow. I try now, and this is the thing where it's difficult, it comes down to habits a lot, is I'm trying to make it that a set time, I start my lunch, I check my to-do list, I bring up the filter, right, what can I do now? And then even, even if I choose not to do it, at least I've chosen based on what's in front of me. Um, so that's what I, so I, I do. Try and, I try and do exactly that, I do it every morning. I'd, I prepare, which usually means move the noisy emails overnight to the side and check that it's not something important. Uh, review the calendar to see how much time I've actually got available. Um, identify the goals I want to do on a day. Um, make sure that they're aligned. You know, is it sensible that I contact? Is it sensible that I, I book the British Gas to service my boiler today? No, it's not. It's not work. Um, and then, and then I go at it. So I try and do that daily. But often I walk in the building and. My pants are on fire already, so I don't do that. I feel much more stressed when I don't do it. So what? Sorry, just what were those four steps again? Oh, five. So uh, I prepare, which usually means move the noise that's coming overnight out of the yep. way. Um, I review what I've got to do in the day. So review my calendar to look at how much time I actually have available for doing stuff. Then I identify off here what am I going to attack. You should put a dot next to it or an asterisk or something. Um, and I check that it aligns with the sorts of goals I'm after to make sure I don't start doing random stuff that isn't actually that helpful on the ground scale. Okay. I, I kind of pretty much do the same thing, and it's one of the reasons, obviously, it's not possible for everyone, but one of the reasons I get in at half seven, quarter to eight, so that I can clear all that clutter from the night before, get, a, get rid of the noise, work out what's important for the day, what time I've got available before everyone else turns up and starts adding to, to that already because I think if I got in at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock and there was already new emails and people misering you before you'd even taken your coat off and you'd not dealt with the stuff from the evening, I'd, yeah, I'd go insane. Well, I guess where we're going with this is that do what works for you. You know, if anything you hear in here resonates, use it, but do what's right for you because Paul clearly is never going to want to do inbox zero it doesn't work for him. Whereas I have quite a, quite a desire to drive that down. I don't, I don't think it's easy to see what the character types are either, so it's really hard to say that would work for you and for that's what else. And yeah, a lot of reminders. I, I would have said that I would be very similar to you from a lot of what you said, but then it's one thing you know, completely different. Yeah. This is kind of a lot of people in our industry care about a lot of detail, and that's why we characterise ourselves and set the nick out ourselves to be quite OCD. But different things get on your nerves, don't they? So, um, you know, having things in order makes me feel less stressed. Even if I've done nothing about them, knowing what I have to do makes me less stressed. Whereas some people get more stressed about not acting, what am I doing about it? So I suppose it's understanding how your mind works and what makes you stressed and what, what makes you effective. Um, so we talked a bit about context. Um, how good are people about leaving 
Um, so it's quite a horrendous day of work, right? And you've got a load on. How good are you at recognising when to stop doing it and when to go home and to, uh, to sleep? Oh, oh really? Sleep. <laughs> Not as good sleep. as I used to be. <laughs> I remember having an email conversation with you while your gone. wife was giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's misleading because she was giving birth for several days. <laughs> I think mean, I mean, edit the uh, recording at about 20 minutes. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> it, it was slow labour, it was fine. Uh, yeah, I don't have best work-life balance and I would not recommend it. <laughs> There's a point, so some people choose it. I, I definitely mm-hmm. select, I quite often work on Saturday morning um, and that's about clearing the decks. And it's my choice, right? Um, I do it so that I have a nice, clear, peaceful weekend. Um, Recognising when you're beating a dead horse, I think, is also really important. I can remember something so clearly. I was I was standing over the good old days when Unix boxes were massive and we had a computer room full of them. I stood over one at about 9 p.m. trying to get this enterprise service boss working, and the program manager came in and just says, "Look, go home. All right, you're not actually helping." And it was that point where I realised that. I was so out of focus because I was so knackered, I wasn't any good. I was actually probably being harmful because I was making changes on the fly. I've got about minute. 10 minutes to figure out when you came back in after a good night's sleep. So that's why of times that's happened. That's why I've identified when I need to cut it off and just get sleep, background processing done, job yeah. come in yeah. morning. Done. You forgot about that one at Hack Manchester a couple of years though, though, didn't you? Uh, that's different. <laughs> That's uh, fulfilling the spirit of the uh, of the event, I believe. Me and Mark, ah, oh, we're going to get some sleep. Everything's wonderful. Wake up, Steve. You don't seem to have got any sleep. No, oh, and it's all broken. <laughs> yeah. That didn't happen this year. I just got very short with people. I think technology has made it worse. I mean, you've got your emails on your phone, your watch, probably directly into your brain by now. <laughs> I do not have work emails on my phone. I don't have them on. I don't have a watch. Um, so. I leave the building at five, and Don it stays here. That's it, you know. And so I couldn't do that okay, every now too. and then. I'm, I might need to. <laughs> That's what all addicts say. I used to do that, um, and when I was in holiday, I was incredibly protective because I worked with nuts all all year. And I'd say, when I'm on holiday, it's my time business, and you can you can stop it if you don't like it. And I used to do that. But what I what I found was it used to add to stress when I was coming back. So in three days before I was coming back, I was thinking, oh god, what's been happening? And I started keeping an eye on what was going on by email, and I found, bizarrely, that, that sounded sick to me, but when I did it, I found it reduced stress, mm. because when I walked back the building, I knew what's happening. Yeah, I mean, I probably did something similar when I was on my holidays, I got, I sat in the airport on the way back, killing time, thought, you know what, I'm find I'll out. do that email deleting yeah. thing, why wait until the Monday morning, or even filing it away, I, I do want to know what's happened, and I do want to skim <laughs> through it, so, yeah. In a time when I am doing nothing else, or anyway. Even that varies for me, like, there's times you don't hear about it because I'm sat home playing on computer games. What you hear about it is when I've just come home and gone, oh yeah, I solved that problem last night because I couldn't stop thinking about it. It's not every day. It's not every day. <laughs> you know, like, if you have problems just thinking about it, a good one is, yes, uh, as soon as you think of something you need to do at work, write it down. No, I, I don't see it as a problem, though. How does your wife feel about this? <laughs> She's fine with it. So my, my wife's got used to it. Oh. Uh, uh, and she knows his part of what makes me sick, I suppose. Uh, here's an interesting one that's completely disconnected from this. Um, who, has anyone, you, you've all heard the expression, the penny's just dropped. Do you know where it came from? So I think it was Edison, I'm not saying like that, but the, what he did was he recognised that you're very prone to states. Uh, Alpha's when you're really relaxed, beta, you'll be in beta state now where you're quite, you, you're engaged in something, you're thinking about it. There's a state called theta, which your brain goes into just before you fall asleep. And you're really, really creative, right? You have some of your best problem solving capabilities just as you're about to nod off. Right? What Edison used to do is he'd sit in his favourite rocking chair, he'd put a steel tray on the floor, and he'd hold a penny between his knees, and he'd relax, and he'd nod. And when he when he fell asleep, his, his body would relax, he'd drop the coin, it would wake him up, and he solved the problem. Right? That's where the expression comes from. But I, I've used this one, right? And we were really struggling with a piece of work. At Valtech, and I sat back in a chair in the sun and I let myself drift off while my colleague was talking about it. I explained what I was doing to this block, I just nodded. <laughs> and I'm using this excuse. Unbelievable. <laughs> I got absolute clarity on what it was we should do as I was just about to go. I've had a similar, I mean, I guess it's probably, you guys will probably find it as well. You know, I've got my COBOL programming background and 
dealing with issues when I was a dev. Beautiful, you couldn't went, that. went to <laughs> dealing with a problem like you know for three days I couldn't solve. Went to sleep on say the Saturday night. Woke on the Sunday morning. It was like yeah, it was I just need a pad and a piece of paper. I wrote out the code and got into work on the Monday morning and it solved the problem. I'm not telling you just, Kate, it's just that what I found out the penny it is, it, is ama- it is amazing when that happens. That I you, often lie in yeah. bed and something will click and I'll just, I'm also okay. a reminder in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, just think I'll just I yeah. find I get a lot of clarity in, in the shower in the morning, it's probably the other side of it, where I'm just waking up. It's kind of, I, I find a lot, I figure a lot of things out then. Go and Google beta state or beta state or mind state. So there's a Wikipedia article that I found really interesting. Using that next to another. That's what Ben does all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's the word. Oh. Right. Um, it's twenty five past oh. one now, so I would um, I, to... I suggest that we sort some of those I think Pomodoro uh, personal Kanban is probably worthy of something on its own. Communicate with impact. So I was actually just gonna recommend a book that I found really useful, which is for writing. So writing emails or writing documents. It's by Strunk and White. I think it's called The Elements of Style. And it's a tiny little thing, about that big, about that thick. And it was reviewed as a good read on um, Radio 4 yeah, a couple of weeks good. ago. It's not a good read, it's a terrible good read. It's good for dipping into and going, really? oh, that's for how to write and communicate yeah. effectively. Yeah, they were doing a piece, a piece on style guides. Right. Was it called The Elements of Style? The Elements of Style, it's by Strunk and White. It's about 50 years old. But, um, Maybe I should bring it in and put it on my bookshelf. <laughs> it helps me to learn how to write um, really quite um, complicated emails in a way that was easy to understand. And when you want to get a message over, especially to someone like yesterday, who's got very limited time, the first 30, 40, 50 words are the big impact words. Yeah, it's amazing how many emails you get which are that long. And it's just me and him. Do they, does nobody realise that this is not going to get through? I'm not. Oh, I'm a big fan of the Right. So, um, why don't we consider doing something in the future about some of those things? Mm-hmm. I think a few of those topics could probably sustain an hour on the way. Dan's talked to it, he does. Got away with it. I'd be interested actually on your thoughts just to wrap up on presumably your first proper My, job in a yeah, IT a company. Do, does some of this strike you as complete off the wall lunacy? No, it, it all makes sense because it's things I've been struggling with like to get that sort of flow into working. Um, prioritization is the main thing I'm taking from this here. Because I do have a few different systems like throw something into a notepad if I need to think about it but not straight away. Because when I come to close my PC down I'll say do you want to save this? Then I actually have to think about it, process it there and yeah. decide whether it's important or not. Whatever I'm doing right at that moment, that goes on my note, like uh, sticky pads, just write it down, put it in front of me. And then I was using Trello before and I've not been recently, I need to start doing it again for just my tasks at hand ahead of me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, prioritization, actually thinking about it at the time or giving myself some time to go through everything and throw out the old things. Yeah. yeah. Save time by not doing stuff. Yeah. Um, email, I I don't get a whole load of it just yet. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I, I do already have filters set up. Um, when Asia Rooms kept having the alerts going through, I immediately just set up a ServiceNow filter to get them off because it was just too much so to read through. So you have to to the distribution group because you're ignoring them. Just the thing is, I am interested in looking at them um, when it's not so, like, all the time. Yeah. It, it's because the alert settings were set up in a way or just so many things going wrong and it got hard to keep track of and do all the things I was doing at that point yeah. at the same time. So your approach is right, isn't it? It's, you want the information, you don't want it now, you might want it later. Yeah, because I'm trying to learn as much as possible as well at the moment. That, that's actually one of my issues as well. Because I am learning so much, my priorities will change fairly quickly because it's like, oh, there's this whole topic I need to learn about before I can even yeah. approach doing this task. And Get used to that. I think most of the folks around the table will, will agree that your priorities will shift around almost constantly. Yeah. Also, having that enormous mouse and stuff to learn, that, that never stops. Never stops. Never stops. <laughs> 
To be honest, I, I don't mind that it, it won't stop because I, I love it. it. It's that sort of always being able to gain something new out of things. It, it's, yeah, that's why I love programming. All right. It's okay, not in the interview at the moment. <laughs> 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 you can find that useful.